Hello again. In this video I'll be case swapping this small form factor Acer PC, installing a graphics card and benchmarking some games on it. So the PC in question is this Acer Aspire XC605 and I will be installing a Arax 570 graphics card in it and all will be inside this Cooler Master case. To get started there's these two screws that need to be removed in order for the side panel to slide off. First thing I notice here is that the PSU is 220 watts which would be enough for a low powered graphics card like this RX 550. I could probably install this without case swapping if I remove the DVD drive like I have done with some Dell SFF PCs. However, I decided not to do that since this has a 4th gen CPU which could be paired with even more powerful graphics cards which won't fit inside the case and need a bigger power supply anyway, so I decided to case swap instead. Another good reason to case swap this PC is that this has an entirely standard motherboard and power connector layout which means two things firstly this will be easy to pair with standard PSU and install in standard case secondly since the original case and PSU are standard too they won't go to waste I can maybe find an older motherboard that will fit this case and that can be made into basic office PC for example. I took out the original i3 CPU and replaced it with an i5-4590 CPU. After applying some fresh thermal paste I reinstalled the heatsink and after that I installed the fan which I'm not sure but I think it's the original fan this PC came with and I'll be using two 4 gigabyte memory sticks so it's 8 gigs of memory for this PC. Before installing it into its new case I tested all of the components functionality. Only thing I needed to do was to enable CSM for the graphics card which was weird usually you don't need to do that with graphics cards that are this recent but otherwise it worked out of the box. First component we'll install into the new case is the PSU. I'll be using this 500 watt fractal design PSU that claims to be 80 plus gold rated which is nice if it's true. Next thing to install will be three of these RGB fans that are iGo branded. They will hopefully help this PC look a bit more modern. These fans come with a controller so they sync up the RGB effects with each other and they also come with an option to plug the reset button into the controller so you can control the RGB lights with the reset button. Next installing both the IO shield and the motherboard was simple because they are both standard components. One quirk of this motherboard is that the USB 3 front panel connector is located awkwardly and will block the GPU installation unless you use this special flexible extender cable which I will link down in the description. Next I plugged in the USB 2 and HD audio front panel connectors which are entirely standard too. Next I installed the RX 570 and secured it down. Next thing I connected all the cables, the SATA cables that go to the CD DVD drive, the SSD and the HDD which I'll be installing and all the power cables that go to the GPU, CPU power connector and motherboard 24 pin connector. Next I wired up the connector for the RGB fans. It needed one Molex power connector and the three 
fans connected on this side and also the reset button motherboard connector. As an SSD I used a Kingston affordable 240 gig SSD which will be the sole new component on this PC if the RGB fans don't count. Everything else will be used. I also installed a 500 gigabyte HDD for additional storage, mainly for Steam library use. SSDs have been getting a bit more expensive lately, along with other PC components, but they are still relatively affordable, unlike GPUs for example. The main reason I'm building and selling this PC is to get rid of some of the GPUs I have lying around now that it's a good time to be selling used PCs. The PC worked right away in its new case and configuration and booted up. Now that I knew the PC would work I put the front and side panel back on only to immediately notice some mistakes I had made. Namely I had put the front fans on the wrong side of the grill. I swapped them onto the other side and also did some cable management. The USB 2 header only allowed one of the USB 2 front ports to work until I used this internal USB hub which only connected to one of the USB ports so the lower row of the pins on the header. So with all of those things fixed there is the finished build. I think it turned out entirely okay. And after putting the side panel in place, I think this build is now officially complete, but there is maybe one little thing that could be improved. The case had apparently had a Pentium CPU originally, so I removed the Pentium sticker and replaced it with a correct one from the Acer PC. You can see a detailed list of specs here and a 3D Mark result which was very good for the cost of these parts. First benchmark will be Apex Legends in 1080p at low settings. After the initial drop from the airship the frame rate ranged from 80 to 100 FPS which was really good and playable frame rate. I noticed that the game apparently had some new AI enemies. I looked for player enemies for long enough time. I found one, immediately died and didn't bother looking for more. I decided to benchmark couple new games I hadn't tried before, so next game will be Ark Survival Evolved at 1080p and mix of low and medium settings. This game turned out to be surprisingly demanding, but it ran fine with these settings, staying above 60 FPS most of the time. I think you're supposed to like build a base in this game or something, but I wasn't that interested in it, so I just found a small enough dinosaur to punch to death. And uh, next another new game to benchmark, also 
another free game from the Epic Store. And also running a mix of low and medium settings on 1080p resolution. Control run at the settings well and uh, was mostly average 60 fps probably. Warning it has one Finnish voice actor which was quite cringy. And uh, lastly, Cyberpunk with 1080p and lowest settings, naturally. Cyberpunk at 1080p low settings run surprisingly well. Many people say that this game cannot be run with 8 gigs of memory, but this seems to run almost as well as the Xeon Plus Arax 480 build that I did that had 16 gigs of RAM so despite the frame rate number being relatively low it's very stable and the game is playable slightly dropping the resolution does give a couple of FPS more but the game looks much worse at this resolution. I would probably still play at 1080 with lower FPS. That is if the game doesn't get significantly more demanding at some point of the story. I didn't really play through the whole story.